Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Canada's Sportsbook. S-D-P-P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. You know, it truly is unreal how effing hot you are. Like, it blows my mind. You know, that body of yours is absurd. I, uh, oh God, who was I talking to yesterday? They were just like, as a hot person, he's never just had to try. Well, yeah, hot people, like it's, it's sort of like. uh, He doesn't know how to speak. Yeah. I was shocked that she wasn't like embarrassed about putting her own DMs out there. Well, she said her friend was going to sell it. This is the Adam Levine situation. She she yeah. said her friend's gonna was gonna sell it to a tabloid, so she wanted to come out with it first. Oh. That's why right at the end of her TikTok, she a says friend, that. You oh, say. yeah, yeah quite the friend, right? Mm. But you know what's interesting? <laughs> Emily Ratajkowski had a, a really great TikTok on that because a lot of people were like, "Nobody feels bad for you." Ugh. It's like, and she's like, "Hey, wait a second. The only person who was duty bound to be loyal in that situation mm-hmm. was Adam Levine. Oh, Let's yeah. not mm-hmm. and and listen. I gotta say, I completely agree with that. I think first off, if you're if you're going after people that are married. That's super shitty. <laughs> like, there's no way around that. That's super <laughs> shitty. But he's the one. Let's let's not take the spotlight off of that. And when you read, it's funny. <laughs> I was saying this to uh, my wife now. I said, when you read any sext out loud, that's like that you have no involvement in. It is embarrassing. Yeah, like people it's so are cr- cr- like those text <laughs> messages are so personal and so yeah. cringe that like I'd be so <laughs> shameful that they're out there. Oh, for sure. <laughs> like for sure. And and. I just feel like like people are like roasting the guy for for um uh for the for the for his text messages being like super cringe. But I think oh. anybody's would be super cringe. What's cringe is that his wife and kids now have to deal with this because oh, yeah. he was being an a hole. I uh I think <laughs> he should be banned from everything because yeah. he's clearly a psychopath. What a no- because okay, yeah. it's not that he cheated on his wife. Many men have cheated on their wives. It, it was always bad, but many men have cheated on their wives. He wanted to name his child after his mistress. So, okay. Go ahead. You know, you go. No, no, go, go, There's go. a theory on that. Yeah. There's a theory on that. So producer. Is it that he's a psycho? Well, that's crazy. It's a crazy <laughs> thing. A complete psychopath. So producer Leah made a good point on Virgin uh, when, we were t- when we were talking about that. Because I said that exact same thing. Mm-hmm. I was like, what is that? That is crazy. Yeah. And she said. Welcome to our hockey show. She said yeah. that was never going to happen. She said. And, and she she's like. She's like, that's what men do when it's been six months and they're trying to get your attention. So they had stopped talking for six months and he's like, he's, you know, been thinking about her like, yeah, I wonder what she's up to. Let me write something crazy. So she has nothing to do but respond. Yeah. I thought the exact same thing. I Is thought it thought? was just, uh, hey, I'm trying to get back in your life kind of thing. Yeah, I don't think he was you know? being real about it. I don't think it would have ever happened. Yeah. Talk, but Adam he's, Levine. He's, he's swung with every vertebrae. That's, oh. Like, he's, he's getting the top five shittiest celebrities that are out there in the 21st oh, century. I'm not sure we could come up with a he, better one. He had, he had a reputation uh, for being kind of a dick in interviews for years. And it's funny when you were, when you read um, uh, celebrity gossip blogs and stuff like that, especially blind item blogs. I don't know if you guys ever checked those out. No, uh, but there's one called Crazy Days and Nights. It's one of the best ones, and it's it's still a blog spot. Like it still looks like wow. a blog spot, but it's an entertainment lawyer out of L.A. who's been doing it since like 2004. And he said uh, he's been saying for years there's a guy who was a celebrity judge who is a lead singer of a band that nobody actually likes that you're forced to listen to. And um, oh, talking about. Uh, yeah, ex- right. Yeah. And and then and so these allegations have been out there for years. It's just this is the first time that it's ever sort of dropped. And isn't it funny? Like, like <laughs> to me, if you're going to cheat, why are you coming at somebody from your verified Instagram account? I, man. <laughs> like, you're, like think about that. You don't have a Finsta. Are you kidding me? Um, did you guys pull Maroon 5 music from the station? No, we're still playing it. You still play Maroon 5, yeah? Right, actually, we've got, because we've got a whole new category now for like some throwback songs. So you get like Flow, Flow Rider, Club Can't Handle Me, and then sometimes you get a little TLC, and then, there's, and there's then. no songs for Jane? Uh, no songs, well, Moves Like Jagger's on there. Oh. Um, we, <laughs> strangely enough, don't play Girls Like You, because that was about his wife. Um, also a very thin, not good song. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we're playing like, it's I think we're playing that playing. in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's still playing it for sure. It's, it's. 
It's kind of funny because every time we do now, people text the station are like, oh, really? Mm-hmm. You guys just dropping a little, you know, it's really taken hold. His tattoos are probably worse than his personality. <laughs> well, if they're a reflection of your personality, then maybe it's a an artistic reflection of what's on the, the fucking inside. California across the, 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 his, yeah. his belly. It's a tough one. Ugh. Steve, I was worried about your lion, but you know. You're worried about my lion, <laughs> no, were you? I'm kidding. I'm, I'm going to get kidding. lion tattooed across my <laughs> why gut. Get, why don't you just get Oshawa? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we need a Photoshop. <laughs> yeah, Oshawa, yeah. and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get like vines draped around it that say Ajax. Can you stand up? Can you just stand up so people can do a, like, a, like a fake Are you body show and a fake belly? tattoo? No, All right, I'm not. this no. is your Photoshop challenge. <laughs> Photoshop challenge with Steve. There you go. There it is. Um, anyway. Man, you know, I got to say, I was feeling really good about myself. I lost like 10, 15 pounds over the summer. Mm. And then I took a picture with a bunch of the Leafs. Oh, well, like, that's a little unfair. <laughs> They're professional. Yeah, yeah but it sucks. Like, I was like, yeah, look at me go. And then I was like, oh, man, that's... Uh, I think you look great. You're doing rule number one of things not to do. Yes, uh, absolutely Don't compare not. yourself to others when you're on your own fitness journey. It wasn't journey. a comparison. It was, I saw them next to me. You that's, said, a and, that's a comparison. That's a comparison. And I was like, wow, my this, the gravitational pull on my skin is so much stronger than theirs. <laughs> don't, you, don't compare. Proceeds to compare. <laughs> you uh, are on no, a Steve like, Dangle fitness it. journey. I saw it. Yeah, dude, listen. It's, I love you, fitness journey. You. You are the only comparison. Yes. Your progress. And you've made progress. And you should be very proud. Absolutely. And the other Thanks. thing you I would say. Compare yourself to the Thylander. Thanks, Dad. The, the thing I would also <laughs> say is that, um, and I only know this because it's on my Lululemon bag uh, oh. when I buy pants, uh, but it says comparison is a thief of joy. And it's true. Wow. When you think about it, it's a good point. You are a Thank thief you, of Thank you, Lululemon bag. Yeah, comparing yourself to a professional athlete. <laughs> and William Compare Nylander. yourself to me. We like, look the same. That was outrageous. What? That's William Nylander just walking in. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Did you see little... the Kawhi Leonard picture? The the Kathai he's, Leonard? He's, he's, uh, no. oh. he's, he's been working his bottom half. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like looking at two chicken wings that are on a lot of steroids. Not that I'm not saying Kawhi's on steroids, but like they're just, it's just leg and then bone. And it's like, it's, it's like Marty St. Louis. modified chicken. Yes. Uh, yeah. He's, like, he's a lot crazy. sturdier now. <laughs> he, oh, well, man. His, his quads is what he had uh, trouble with in Toronto, mm-hmm. I think. That's what he had. Uh, well, that, that's where he, he blew it out in San Antonio. Yeah. And was, then they didn't take it seriously. And they oh, were really? the, the, the scuttlebutt at the time was at least around the Raptors was like the reason they, they rested him and whatever was because they, you know, he was worried about shortening his career. Right. Mm-hmm. I just, course. I just remember like in the playoffs, there was footage of him like rolling out his leg and they were like, Oh man, what is, what does that mean? And I'm like, uh, it means it's a day. It means today is a day. He's a professional athlete. Of course he's rolling. Yeah. Yeah. Get a foam roller. Absolutely. Everybody. How, how was Cheap investment? How was, um, how was media day for the Leafs? It was great. Uh, call time was 6.30. Did you guys draw? Uh, no, we didn't draw. <laughs> hey! Hey! Those always do well. I've never, How dare you? I've never seen How a TikTok you? of an NHL player being told to draw their logo. Yes, you have. Uh, and it was seen a banger. That. <laughs> freak you. Freak, freak the both of you. How dare you insult my content? I don't call you up and be like, Adam, that contest for... Whatever the fuck tickets sucked butt. I never tell you they suck butt. <laughs> hey, Jamie Ben, why don't you draw the stars logo? Jamie Ben was not there. It was was. Jake Ottinger for the Dallas Stars, <laughs> and he bleeps. was a good artist. Mm-hmm. Do the stars logo real shitty? And it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Suzuki was the best one. Yeah, like the best yeah. Canadians artist. logo was all right. Uh, <sighs> imagine no, got Canadians rock. logo was really bad. Can actually. you imagine? Can you imagine? I was just gonna say if it was really bad. Imagine Montreal media. It's like, oh, he already hates us. He's the captain. We <laughs> yep. hate him. Well, we haven't released it yet. We'll wait till they're on like a losing streak, and then we'll release it. Probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Uh, Leafs. Leafs media. It was really good. Um, what was it like? So you get there at six thirty. Get there at six thirty. They're like first interviews at seven fifteen. That was then pushed wow. to seven thirty. That was then pushed to nine. <gasps> but. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, everyone was really grumpy. But oh my god, we got ten guys between nine and one, hmm. which was wild. Like everyone with the Leafs organization, I, I noted it with a few other people who were there who I didn't actually see that day. I just wanted to know their experience. They're like, yeah, everyone was really happy. Everyone was smiling and just there was a really positive vibe. Mm. And uh, 
John Tavares was the most personable I've ever seen him ever. Like, and I'm not saying he's a jerk. I'm saying like, well, you know, there's a reason that my Ikea character is, is the way that it is. Right. <laughs> he's quiet. He's yeah. quiet. And I found out something about John Tavares that I, I, uh, I'm going to leave that as a tease. Would you, will you be oh, able to huh. find that on uh, Sportsnet's YouTube channel? You will. And it's, it's easily the most John Tavares thing ever. I can't wait. I hope it, it includes his laugh, please. It's something please. that he has in his house that I am willing to bet no other human being on earth has in their house. Wow. A, a kale trophy. You're honest to goodness on the right track. Yes. <laughs> yes, I can't wait for this. <laughs> well, so what's yeah. the list? Well, how, who did you do? Who did you interview? Oh, boy. Uh, okay, I know. Okay, we started with Muzzin. Mm -hmm. Who do we get? Muzzin, Lilligren. Tavares, Marner, Nylander, Bunting for the first time in person. Um, Giordano, that oh, was a really cool one. Nice. Um, just because I'm like, that's Mark Giordano. He's wearing Leaf stuff. That's ridiculous. Um, that would be a first for you as, as yeah. well. <laughs> Kerfoot, who I don't want to get traded just for the interviews. He's very funny. Um, Matt Murray. And who's the one that I'm missing? I am missing a grand total of one. I'm not sure. It'll come to me. What's uh, how many hockey questions did you actually ask? Like, I, mean, I imagine it's very None. little. Yeah. None? None. Okay. None. That wasn't what we were there for. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah, be people are going to be like, that's fucking stupid. Like, no, it's we had several reporters there. People were asking. Mm -hmm the proper questions that's not what i was there for and you guys are the rights holders so there was like five different reporters you know and they're all gonna do all those hockey questions yeah. wait who's the rights holder uh, roger Ro sports net <laughs> mm. roger sports and media know. or whatever it's they rebranded to i was there sean mckenzie was there i think luke fox was there as well i know he's covering camp this week yeah there's a lot of people there yeah um, everyone was really that's happy. cool but can you can you give us a tease on any of them besides the john tavares one any of the other ones it's gonna be oh um I just got to say, every player, um, oh, Wayne Simmons was number 10. Ah, oh, nice. Uh, oh, man, he's always good. He's always good. He's, always brings he's it. He's fantastic. Um, no, none of the players, for lighting purposes, were allowed to wear their hat. We asked them to remove their hat. Mm. And when Nylander, do it, uh, when Nylander did it, I hope we were recording. Hat hair? One, one the for- The shake? No, just the-, the Yeah. <laughs> I, because I need people to see that I involuntarily, I made a sound involuntarily. He is beautiful. I went, wow. <laughs> <laughs> really? I think I, I either said wow or oh my God. Like just oh, because- Oh, it's funny. This mane yeah. of hair came out and I was just like, Holy shit! You're just a, you're just a gorgeous a, man. You're just a puddle of testosterone next to him. Just, I was, yeah, man. <laughs> something, something like we that. We don't, we don't talk enough about how beautiful that man this is. is. He's it. Well, you, you've already, you've touched on his thylanders. You've touched on his hair. Like he's, he's an incredible specimen. Oh, and Tavares is a goddamn kangaroo. Like I don't know how <laughs> anyone ever knocks him down ever. He, like, uh, it is kind of when you actually watch him play. Like it's always funny when people are so upset about. Well, John. Devar when you see him in front of the net, you see him around the net. No one can push him and off. And along the walls. I, you Although, know what? I, I don't know if you guys Sorry. saw the uh, preseason Slavkovsky where somebody tried to hit him and they just fell apart. <laughs> that was that so good. <laughs> His arms blew off. Like yeah. it was just, <laughs> Slavkovsky's huge. That gave the Montreal Canadiens so much information. That one little video clip. If you haven't seen it, you absolutely must. This Buffalo Sabres prospect, they don't know who, tr lines them up, lines them right up. Mm -hmm. Like, Head down and everything. Head down, enormous Cross hit. Cross the ice. And one of them fell down and it wasn't Slavkovsky. Slavkovsky barely breaks, breaks stride. Like he, he barely, doesn't stop. He barely even preps for the hit. Like I don't even know how, how much time he had to prepare. And that's amazing for the Montreal Canadiens because they get to bring him into a room and show him the video and scold him and be like, you can't do that in the NHL. If you do that in the NHL, blah, blah, blah. And then as soon as he leaves the room, they get to go to each other and go, holy fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we yeah. have this guy. Yeah. That's insane. There's yeah. also great footage of your boy, uh, the six... Six? Dave Yurchek? No, um, the Detroit Red Wings prospect that we talked about before our summer break that you brought up. The goalie? Who's, who's massive and he's a forward. Oh! Do you remember? Oh. And Adam's like, we need to watch him. There was, what is his name? There's great footage of him in camp dangling people. Yeah, I'll bring like it six, up eight, here. Isn't he? Yeah, yeah. The new generation of NHL players, and I'm not talking about like the Elmer guys. Elmer Solderblom. Yeah. 
What a name too. The the Elmer. The guys, any NHL player, I'm excited for any NHL player with a birth year that starts with a two. Because yeah. remember the what was the I'm mar- depressed about it, but okay. Continue. <laughs> the market inefficiency was little guys with skill because it was all big guys with no skill. And so evolution was like, hey, you know what would be fun is if we made big guys with skill and they're not once in a generation guys anymore. They're slowly creeping up Mm -hmm. and like, we're going to be old men watching like six foot 10 guys. Like, who's this pipsqueak? Like, yeah, (laughs) it's just everyone in the league is going to be like that. Huge. It, uh, it happened in basketball already. You'll see, you'll see Giannis, like he's the development of that. You know, it's not really the little guys doing all the dribbling anymore. It's the fucking seven footers. It's yes, crazy. But I was told because he's he's slightly subpar at one thing, which I think is jump shots, um, <laughs> that he's not actually a great player. That's what I was told. This is your Whoa. boy. Elmer. That looks so dumb. He's so look at him. So he's anybody so big. anybody listening right now, we got footage of uh Elmer Solderbaum, who's six nine dangling people during training camp in Detroit. If Chara was a forward doing a Datsuk impression. And like his skating's great. He right? The guy's st- right? <laughs> are you like, are you serious? He's six nine. Nice. Wow, That's, dude. That's um horrifying. Cool. Well, can't wait for that to be in the division <laughs> forever. That's I also want to say, um just on the Leafs thing for a second. Oh my god. Uh this made me laugh. <laughs> uh Fulaman, acting the Fulaman said, uh, people are worried because Jake Muzzin is already missing skates. But the important thing here is he's ready when the time comes to throw boulders at Isengard. And if you're a if you're a fan of Lord of the Rings, you'll know that he's comparing him to the Ents, which are the trees that yes. destroy. And I just thought that was hilarious. And imagining him as a big tree with a beard is kind of perfect, isn't it? He was he was the first guy we spoke to, and he was in a good nice. mood. good mood. But what Timothy Lilligren and Jake Muzzin? Yes, I was shocked that Lilligren was available to speak. I so, I saw yeah, him great. on my list and never in a million years did I think he was going to actually show up because <coughs> he's got a hernia, man. Like, yeah. have you? Uh, my I, dad I, had one and it, it, Toronto has one of the best hernia repair hospitals in the world, actually. Yeah. So uh, maybe he got it repaired here. My dad got his done uh, and it's very painful. It just makes life miserable. Yeah. By the sound of it. Yeah. And, and it's one of those injuries you are constantly reminded it's there, but it's at such a focal point of the body that. You like also, your rotation. And, well, you also forget it's there. Yeah. So like, I know a guy who's always chasing around his kids and he'll just like bend down to pick up a toy and be like, fuck, I'm not, I forgot. I'm not supposed to do that. Oh, so gosh. I don't think we should expect the Lilligren to be like, all right, you're back in the lineup. Save the day, kid. No, he's got to be fully healed because you can re-aggravate that. And that's a very serious, then you're on another two months. Right? Well, and then, and then your season's done. You yeah. You're I mean? cooked at that point for sure. Yeah, sure. so this is that's going to be hard for him. It has some people asking, like, "Hey, why don't you guys just fucking deal with it and 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 sign a Sandine?" Yeah, no, you can't do that. Oh, why don't you guys just do what Dubas has been accused of doing his entire tenure? Yep. No, he's got to win this one. Mm-hmm. He's got to win this one, and he should win this one. He should win this. One. I, yeah. I, you know, uh, I'm I always want. I'm always for players making more money, uh, but I think in this case, I'm the 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 comparison that he's using. I'm not sure. Like Bo- Boquist, right? I don't yeah, know. Boquist and Jake Bean, supposedly. Like, but you're not Jake Bean. And he was offered. Suppose, not yet. I think it was 32 Thoughts that said they wanted to get Lilligren and Sandy and signed to matching. Same day, 1.4 million a, a year. For two years. Yeah. And he's obviously thinking, no. Well, I yeah. He, but, but this is the thing is it's like, I'm sure if I'm Kyle Dubas in that situation, and this is where I'm like totally on, on, uh, on the Leaf side on this one, I'd be like, Okay, but like, what's the comparison? So you're comparing yourself to these contracts, but what's the comparison? I what, are you, what are we comparing? I love him. I think he's going to be great. He's played 80 games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, like, that's not enough, man. Like, like, and oh, yeah, but this happened and that happened and that happened. Well, you know, that's in business. Do they they go go awe or do they say tough shit? Yep. Mm-hmm. They say tough shit. Do we, are we, do we want to have the Kyle Dubas conversation now? Yeah. Sure. All right. So, Obviously, I, I didn't get to hear these quotes. Basically, what he said was, um, 
Yeah, so because, okay, yeah, I guess I they're, they're, they're comparing points with points per game, I guess, with Boquist and Jake Bean. Because hmm. um, I'm just looking at their points and they're up, about on par, but I think those guys have had bigger impacts. I'm just yeah. throwing that out there. And um, the Leafs don't have the cap space. Like, yeah, they need out, to really. save every penny. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so um, Kyle Dubas essentially said, and I'm going to paraphrase here because the exact quote doesn't really matter. It's more about, he said, Brendan Shanahan told me this summer that uh, I will not be getting an extension for this year. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean he's fired. It just means that they're evaluating him on that year. And he said, I won't let it be a distraction because it won't be a distraction or because I won't let it be because I won't let it be a distraction. Mm -hmm. Number two, he said, I'm totally fine with that. I'm fine with being judged on the results of this year. And when you're a process guy, like this is the guy, this is where Kyle Dubas drives people crazy. (laughs) Okay. Kyle Dubas was asked, do you remember the World Series a couple years ago where uh, the Devil Rays or, or just the Rays now? We're playing their best pitcher and they're going to like the sixth inning yeah. and they're like, well, he's up around 100 pitches. You got to pull him. Yep. And everybody's like, leave him in. He's the best pitcher you have. And they blow it and they lose the World Series. And Kyle Dubas gets in front of the microphone and says, I'd have done the same thing. If that's your process, you got to stick to it. And he went, he went to, he, he graduated with a doctorate from the school of nobody wants to hear that yeah, shit. Exactly. <laughs> Because, Come on, it, because man. sports is about process, but sometimes it's about going, I got to call an audible yeah. and everybody, but, but, but Kyle's a process guy and that's going to drive the average sports fan, fan fucking crazy. There's no question about mm-hmm. that. I can see Kyle wants to see this through. I think that it's unfair to say Kyle's vision was exactly executed. I think when you have a flat cap and COVID, I think they were expecting to be able to spend more money and add more players. Yep. I think they were, but that's not what the hand you were you were dealt. And he's had an opportunity to move on from some of these players and hasn't. So yep. he obviously believes in the core. And why shouldn't he? They what, what did CJ have in his article the other day? Like the third most regular season wins in the last few years? Like it was crazy. I think since Keefe was hired, the Leafs have the second best record in the league behind the Avs. Like in the regular season. I, in the regular season. And so I can't <laughs> yeah. blame him. For for saying, yeah, I'm I'm comfortable with the results and I feel like we're gonna get through. If if you're him, you must think, okay, like I can't do much better in the regular season than this. So what am I doing? They've had a lead in absolutely every playoff series over this streak. It's torture. Like it's it's there's there is no comparable. Mm-hmm. So like the Leafs with Dubis, like depending on how this year end. And it's a it's an impossible decision to make, and it's perfectly justifiable either way they go. You you go. This is a unicorn of a situation. Our team is good. If we keep bashing this triangle into the square peg, it'll it, it, the square peg will eventually become a triangle. And that's what CJ ar- argued in the article. Like, yeah. don't play chicken with a guy like this. This is really good. Yeah, keep going. Or do you go? If I had wheels, I'd be a wagon. Right. And it doesn't it doesn't work. It hasn't worked. It doesn't work. It's torture. Mm-hmm. The they were up two games to one over the caps in 2017. They were up in the third period of game seven in 2018. They were up one game to none, two games to one, and three games to two over the Boston Bruins in 2019. They were up three nothing in game three against the Blue Jackets and blew it. They were up three games to one against the Montreal Canadiens and blew it. And they were up three games to two against Tampa. Two and, one and, and two one as well. Two one three two, two. one and one nothing. And, yeah. and were With three leads. And were leading game six mm-hmm. in the third or heading into the third. And lost game like seven that. by one goal. And lost game seven by one goal. Fuck. And I can guarantee. Fuck. I can guarantee you this: <laughs> if the Leafs don't re-sign him, no matter what happens this year, he'll be signed immediately. Oh, that's oh, not even results yeah. like Question. that. Yeah. And he'll be paid. He'll probably get a raise. If you listen to yesterday's CJ show, CJ said exactly that after he wrote his article. He got mm-hmm. a couple texts from people around the league saying, um, yeah, Kyle Dubas would be working in my organization tomorrow if he was available. Absolutely. And if you're yeah. the owner of an NHL franchise, I'd be like, <laughs> fucking whatever yeah. he wants. That's one of the smartest hockey ma- minds working right now. And one of the things I read, uh, I think Jonas Siegel had in his article, was that this is Kyle Dubas is the longest tenured GM that the Leafs have had since um, uh, Cliff Fletcher in, in the early his, 90s. his first tenure. 
91 to 97 yeah. was Cliff Fletcher. And Cal Dubas, like four years. Cal Dubas has been there since 2018, and he's surpassed everybody in between him. That's a joke. The Leafs don't hold on to GMs. And here's a good, smart hockey mind that give them some runway. You always do this where you fire the guy two years in, three years in. You just say, all right, let's reset. How about this time we try something new because the old process didn't get you a cup. So let's try it where you let the guy have more than five years, you know, give him a decade or something and see what he can do. You know, what's going to make it way harder to sign Austin Matthews firing the guy he's currently negotiating with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's going to be a real tough one. I think, I think also, and you're going to get a lot of comments in response to that. And they're going to get a lot of people pushing back going, yeah, but they haven't had the results and you're right. The, the postseason results are not there. The, you know, I think the perspective you're coming from here, if you're pro Dubas in this situation is, yeah, but if you want that playoff success, the best way to do that is to hedge yourself with the best possible team. Sometimes you do need a new, yeah, like a new coach sparks things. Mm-hmm. Like we saw it in, Jer- in Jersey. Lou fired a coach. Another coach took over. They, they blew up. It was amazing. Look what happened in St. Louis a few years ago. They fired the coach. Yep. You know, sometimes you fire Pittsburgh a GM. Two Stanley Cups after firing their coach midseason. With Mike Sullivan. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and so sometimes that's the case. And we've only given you coaches. I don't, I can't remember a case where a GM was fired. And then the next year, the team's like, oh. we're good now. Yeah. Uh, but. It's probably happened. There's been 107 years of the sport, so I'm sure it's happened. Yeah. It's just, you know, I can see I could see both sides here. I lean towards, let's see what happens this year. I yeah. don't think it may, it, first off, it's terrible PR with the older school fans if you sign Kyle Dubas now to an extension. Yeah, yeah. And also, true. if you're that's the board, very true. if you're the board at MLSE, yeah, you're a little bit results based, man. Mm-hmm. Sorry that it, we just mentioned it earlier, right? Oh, I'm sorry that you, sorry that you had to deal with this with your business. But did you win or did you not win? Yeah. That's what it comes down to, and that's what this business is. Did you win or did you not win? I think that Kyle's handling it well, and I think the Maple Leafs are doing exactly what they should do, which is we'll wait and see. <laughs> uh, all the like the Leafs have basically been like, uh, I, I think their greatest victory financially. Mm-hmm. Uh, over Dubas's tenure is instead of three playoff home dates, he's been able to deliver four <laughs> because they've they've gotten uh, home ice advantage in a seven game series. That's not enough. They need another round. They need another round. They need two. They need three. They need four. And I I'm not bashing the guy. I was really excited when he came on board. I think he's a smart mind, and I think he might win the cup here. But Brendan Shanahan has been here long enough that he offered Randy Carlisle a contract extension. So we're talking about Dubas with this long tenure that's actually quite short. Mm -hmm. Shanahan's is twice the length. Now, he brought in Dubas, but like he was the AGM and it was under Lou Lamorello. Like, at what point does it go to him? Because this year, people keep talking about like who, who are the obvious targets? Dubas is the obvious target. His his contract is ending. Okay, mm-hmm. fine. Then the conversation turns to Sheldon Keefe. Supposedly, Keefe's like Vegas odds of getting fired this year are ridiculously high. What? He's been he's been a very good coach. He's he's got to have like the highest win percentage in Leafs history mm-hmm. for the regular <laughs> yeah. season. Yeah, like it's ridiculous. And, and it's not like he doesn't make adjustments in the playoffs too. Mm. No, like, like they haven't been able to close. But he's certainly smarter than Babcock was. Yeah. Babcock looked like a Bruce Cassidy, who, by the way, has now the same moniker that Babcock has of being inflexible and not adjusting to, to, to teams. Yeah. Bruce Cassidy made Babcock look like a fool. Yo, game he seven 2019 him. was Embarrassed. humiliating. Mm-hmm. That was humiliating because they were the better team. Six games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But back to people on the chopping block. You were Sorry. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and then they lost 5 1. It's Sorry. Had to Austin Matthews. Uh, Austin <laughs> Matthews. I mean, the dudes, he's got to be negotiating that contract right now. Well, and and it was interesting to hear his comments on that because he said, they asked him about it and he's like, and this is the last time I'll entertain this question. I love being here. You know, my family's here. We're not my family's here, but I feel like this is home or whatever. Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 blah. The, the city's embraced my family is what he said. And he said, uh, and I can't sign an extension yet. So there's that. 
I, uh, I, I noticed a handful of things at the player media tour in Vegas. One was that Jordan Stahl came into the room with no representation whatsoever. You mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not even a like a media person. Everyone else had a media person come in with them. Austin comes in with a Leafs media person and this guy I didn't recognize. It ended up being his agent. Oh. Which not all the players had, very few. Mm -hmm. So I think they know these questions are coming. They're not coming from the guy who had the Pictionary room where I asked about aliens, but they, they knew the question, <laughs> fuck you. The answers were funny. <laughs> anyway, they, uh, <laughs> but they, they know the questions are coming and they're trying to get out ahead of it because like Austin said, there's really no point to having this conversation. Not now. It almost sucks for him that Nathan McKinnon signed because we're like, well, what about McKinnon? And then people said, all right, well, what about McKinnon? And then McKinnon's like, here's a contract. And they go, all right, Austin. No. <laughs> but, but like, he literally can't sign. Right. He yeah. can't sign. Like, it's it's a waste of breath. I don't know if you've ever seen the uh, the Ted Lindsay documentary. And this, if you're an American, you for sure haven't seen it. But it's about the formation of the Players Association. And Ted Lindsay, and it's like the difference between the way Jack Adams in Detroit, Jack Adams, the owner and GM and coach, that, that's crazy, by the way. Yeah. Jack Adams treated uh, Ted, uh, Gordy Howe versus everybody else on the team. Mm. So like, if, if you were not Gordy Howe, you'd walk in and he'd be like, this is what you're making this year. Sign the contract. And Ted Lindsay, uh, and, then, and then he goes to Gordy Howe and he calls him big guy. That's his thing. Hey, big guy, what do you want to make this year? And Gordy Howe would like give him a number. He'd be like, "That's what you're making." And I and then, but with Ted Lindsay, it's a, Ted Lindsay's like, "I just had my best season, and I'm not going to get a raise." Are you serious? And that's sort of when this all kind of pops up. It's really good if you can dig it up. It's from the '90s, but it's really good. Um, I feel like the Leafs will be like, "Hey, big guy with Austin Matthews, what do you want to make? What do you want to make? We'll build a team around that. What would you like to make? It's up to you." Ah, uh, uh, do I want to be the one to say this? I'll be the one to say this. Austin hasn't won anything here. Mm -hmm. And it's not his fault. So let me get that out of the way. It's not his fault. Mm -hmm. He's done everything in his power. It's mm -hmm. a team game. So it's a team game. So obviously he needs a stronger team around him. And what's going to make that really hard is if he makes $15 million. Yeah, but then he'll say, listen, the cap's going up $10 million bucks in 25. We all know it. And I'm only taking three million of that because you already pay me eleven. Sure, it hasn't happened yet, but it's going to happen. Steve. It's going to happen. Steve, I'm just that, telling you, ten million is the estimate now. So wait for three more I, years of for, positive revenue, which they're going to. For hit. your point, I understand the argument of pay Austin Matthews, but having Mitch and Tavares making what they make, that's where you cut back. Or there's, maybe Tavares. There's you know, a very you, interesting conversation. You pay the pillar, and you don't pay the other two on the other side as much as he's making. That, I think that's a much I don't even, better argument. I don't even have a problem with Mitch. I have no problem with what Mitch is making. He's scoring. He's going to get 100 points this year. That's my belief. Tavares is going to be, that's going to be a challenge. Mm -hmm. That, I, I that hope, is going to be a challenge. I hope he puts that to bed this year. I think he's going to have a bounce back season. He, you know, and, and it's he, funny because he's like a nine million, nine and a half million dollar player still. Yeah, they, they talked, uh, you know, every player's in the best shape of their life right now. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's all they say. But like with Tavares, there's very good reason to believe it. For, he looked fantastic. He was on the ice ridiculously early. He was working out with a player who wasn't even in camp. Um, we think it was Brandon Lasowski. I think that was Kyle Cushman. Because Mike mm. uh, Mike Stevens is like, who the hell is number 56? He's not even on the roster. Um, and well, uh, Lasowski, uh, seventh round pick, Kyle was, Cushman was, was wearing it at the prospect tournament. Yeah, it's how do you how do you know that, bro? That's, that's very funny. Yeah, yeah, it's it's good for him. But that's also, a guy that's like, you shouldn't be a reporter. You should be within the management of this organization. Yeah. Like, I bet most coaches don't know who the fuck that guy is. Come he's, on. He's going through uh, an off season where he's not dealing with COVID, or yep. at least not COVID restrictions. He's not dealing with a head injury, a neck injury, and a knee yeah. injury. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? That so, head like, injury was bad. Yeah, yeah, so Tavares like looked a little out of sorts last year. Well, yeah. Yes. That's mm -hmm. exactly what I expected. How were you that's after a car got. accident? Yeah. Yeah, man. It, it takes people a long time to recover. I know people, they were in the middle of getting their masters. They, it was a car accident. They got a concussion out of it and it put their life on hold for like three years and they end up getting out of it and they ended up, you know, getting their, 
getting their masters and moving on with their life. And that's the good story. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You focus on the, oh, three years of their life. Some people just don't even get out of it. Right? Yeah. Like that was a bad, bad, bad. It's, you see NHL players get like concussions all the time. You see them, you know, sort of get knocked wobbly, get their eggs scrambled. It's rare you see a guy get starched. Yeah. He got starched and he's past that. Yeah. No. I'm cool. I'm, I'm excited. I actually, hopefully, you know, it's, it's we had not that, linear, but we had hopefully. that question from the listener, Jesse, that you asked a couple weeks ago. And I, I wish I could answer it every episode because every day now, and I'm reading more Leaf stuff, I'm getting more and more excited about this Leaf shirt. More excited even oh, the than question, I was. Why should you be excited for the season? Yes, that's yeah. what I should have said. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why should we be excited for the Leaf season? There is so much here. Uh, I'm, I'm pumped about it. I, uh, Matt Murray said he watches my videos. Does he? Oh, what? Which, uh, I would encourage him to stop doing. <laughs> <laughs> I would encourage all the Leafs. Ah, he's a big boy. I'm sure he can stop. handle it. Uh, um, just to wrap up the Dubas thing, um, I would give him three years. I think three year extension I think after this one. What he's done already has proven that he deserves an extension. I would give him three more years just to tinker, see where it is at the end of that. And then, you know, then we're at firing stage. Here, well, here's, here's a three-year extension, I think, would be fair for Dubas right now. So the, the Leafs are saying, and this is how, the, how interesting the negotiation will be, because the Leafs, if, if he got, gets past that round one thing, mm -hmm. right? He gets mm -hmm. to round two, and the Leafs get into round two. Well, then he can say to them, yeah, well, thank you for the extension offer, but I'm going to test the waters and see what else is He could. There. He can always do that, right? Yeah. So it's, you do... It does work you both run ways, a, you're right. Yeah, right? You're right. He, could walk. he might be a big free agent general manager. Oh, man, wouldn't that be funny? Right? How he do might, you like me now? Maybe he's tired of their bullshit. I don't know. Yeah. Also, I'm curious to see what getting knocked out in the second round, like let's say that's what happened. I'm curious to see how that would be received because look at how we talk about the Panthers and look at how we talk about the Flames. Like, going forward, they're exciting teams, but that's how their seasons ended last year, and we call it a failure. because Especially the Panthers. Well, based on expectations, <laughs> it bloody was. They Both those teams won their division. But the and Panthers... both those teams got smacked the in the second and, and we have to admit now, I mean, the, the league has two seasons, and one's the regular and one's the playoff. The Panthers played a high-risk up-and-down game. Mm-hmm. That is going to expose you in the playoffs, especially against yeah. who they're playing. And if you're the GM and you sat there and you gave up two first round picks for Ben Sherrod and Claude Giroux, and now you're out those first round picks to get swept by Tampa, that's bad GM. And and then you lost. Now, not to say that Huberto, uh, it, it, like if you had done a one for one Huberto Kachuk, that makes sense. But they also included weaker. Yeah, no, the Flames did very well. Very, <laughs> very, very well. Um, let's do, uh, you can bet that, shall we? Dave can't join us because, again, he's still in Winnipeg and the Wi-Fi is not great. But listen, as always, we ask you, 19 plus, please play responsibly. It's sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. Jesse is the guy picking the props today. I love... But... Well, these are the ones you sent me. I love but, these because, um, <laughs> because they each have a name okay. and you can bet on them now and they're hockey related. And Jesse, the first one is the thrill on the strip. <laughs> yes. Okay. So this bet is over under Phil Kessel total goals this season. Will he have over 16 and a half or under 16 and a half? Oh, Where would had, you lean? He had eight, I believe, last year. Is that it? Yeah. yeah he's, got it. he's still got the shot, but it just. And he had like 50 points. It's crazy. Like, all wow. he was doing was setting guys up. I don't even know who. A $10 all. bet on each side, by the way, would net you about $8.50 of profit. About mm. $18 back. So, which side are you leaning on? That's a tough one. Phil I'm, Kessel to get 17 goals or 16 goals? I'm leaning over. And the reason I say oh. that is because um, Vegas, uh, while they have incredible injuries, like it's just crazy. Uh, obviously, Shea Weber, but then you've also got Nolan Patrick missing the season. And you got Shea Theodore out for the entire season. Um, they still have great players there. Like Mark Stone. People forget Mark Stone is still there. Jack Eichel is there. If you have Jack Eichel feeding Phil Kessel, I mean, even, even if it's just on the power play. Mm -hmm. oh. Like, come on. Come they're, on. They're going to have, like, because of the question mark in net, I think they're going to have some really high event games. 
They're going to have some games where they're the better team and they're losing mm-hmm. in the third. And yep. they're, they're going to need a goal or two. Oh, boy. I, I, like, the, I like the over because it oh, gives yeah? me something to cheer for. Not um, necessarily because I think it's going to happen. It, this, is, this is a wild card uh, bet because you're talking about a guy who very didn't score 16 goals last year, 16 <laughs> and a half goals last year, who is absolutely capable. You're asking him to more than double his goal but total from last year. But it's Phil Kessel. And he is but. right now slotted in as their top left winger, Jack Eichel, Phil Kessel, Riley Smith. Come okay, on. Okay, no. Me. I want to see It'd game be, one. Is Phil Kessel playing on the first line? Well, because the second line they want to keep together, Marsha So, Stevenson, Stone. If he plays on the second oh. line, he could get 92 points like he did in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Uh, here, I want to see who oh. led the... Who led the Coyotes in... Okay, so they have three 20-goal scores. Oh, that's brutal. Yeah, yeah. Clayton Keller, Nick Schmaltz, Lawson Kraus, none of whom played over 67 games. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so, the, like, you know, some of those guys could have hit 30, but... When was the last time really Phil tough. Kessel scored 17 goals in his career? Uh, good question. The 56-game lockout shortened season, he had 20 goals. Not lockout. No, sorry. No, no, no. That was muscle memory. Whoops. COVID. COVID. Okay, yeah. make a choice here because we got to move on t- to the next I've taken the over. That, that, that's got me. I got the over. I got the over as well. Three All overs. Right. All right. I want to say in the 70 game season, you only had 14. The next oh, one sh- is. Oh, oh, that's better. That's more info. The next one is called Stock in Dock. Kirby Dock, <laughs> Jesse. <laughs> so Kirby Dock, his regular season points total is set at 35 and a half. Do you think he's going to get uh, 36 points or 35 points? Oh, man. A $10 bet on that's going to net you uh, about 8 bucks or 9 bucks, depending on if you're on the over or the under. So there's another guy who has not done this before. What's his career high? 27? 26 last year. 26? Oh, my gosh. I think he's going to have a bigger role. But that the Habs have like sneaky depth that if they don't, um, like if if he doesn't perform well, he'll get pushed down the lineup. Mm-hmm. It's he's not being handed a top six role. There was news this week, I believe, that Nick Suzuki injured could be injured for a couple weeks. I but it doesn't. He's not going to miss any playing time. They think in the regular season. Yeah, they think. Yeah, they think. And if they do, is he going to be playing twenty minutes? I'll go. Okay. Here's, do you want to know who he's playing with? I think he'll go over. I'm going to bet on him going under because I'm a Leaf fan and I want to cheer against the Habs. Here's who he's playing with, and this might sway you. Mm-hmm. Dodonov and Gallagher on the third line, likely. That's a nice line. And if it's not him, it could be Drew and Josh Anderson. I'm going to tell you something, he's guys. Go over. This is such an easy bet. It's over. Because we're asking a 21 year old to get a little better at being at being a national hockey league player. The Blackhawks, the terrible, like, couldn't score shit last all year. All we're Blackhawks. asking for is uh, him to abs too. Yeah. excel a little as a Montreal Canadian, get 40 points, and be decent. Like, Here's what I'm going to say. That's an easy over. I will say no. No, <laughs> I will say under. <laughs> and, he, and those Caulfield power play points potentially too. Maybe, but I'm going to say under. He's not going to play power play. It's going to be Dvorak and Suzuki. I think 36 points for Kirby Doc is such an easy bar. Unless they trade for it. Yeah, but why would they do that? You've got really good Habs depth, depth at center. Trying. Steve, <laughs> what, Steve, what are you? Under. Oh. Just because, No, no. I think he's going to go over. So this is my stress bet. I'm betting against my gut, but, but for my team loyalty. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesse, you're going over? I'm easy. Easy over. Okay. Easy over. Easy. All right, we'll come back to this at the 40 end of the season. 40-point Kirby Doc. Sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. Check it out. You've heard us talk to you about Athletic Greens before, and if you're wondering what they are, well, one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you are absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. It's a special blend of ingredients that supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. All things that Steve Dangle doesn't have to worry about. Yep. Ever. Ever. My strongest friend uses Athletic Greens. My tallest and strongest. Really? 
Yes. Okay, well, there you, you go. You use it, right? Jesse Blake. That's there right. <laughs> it's cost you less than three bucks a day. And right now, to make it easy, we want you to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into flu and cold season, and especially if you're a parent. Yay. Uh, one scoop of water every day. That's it. Uh, um, you don't have to do the million different pills. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you one free year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash STP. And that, again, is athleticgreens.com slash STP. Take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate in daily nutritional insurance. Welcome to Fresh Ball Fall. Fresh Ball Fall. It's a season of pumpkin spice and making sure your crotch looks nice. Oh, listen. Literally, that's the script. I, that feels more Christmassy. Mm-hmm. But about, I'll allow it. What about sipping cider in a fall breeze and using Manscaped products to trim your balls with ease? Okay. That, that one I like. I also like cider a lot. Today's show is brought to you by Manscaped, a company here to make sure that your foliage isn't the <laughs> only thing shedding its excess leaves. Heck, even Mother Nature knows it's time to lose the excess clutter for fall. Join over 6 million men worldwide who trust manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20 percent off with the free promo code dangle get that performance package 4.0 for your family jewels you know the royal family's in the in the news right when your significant There's... other takes you to a pumpkin pumpkin patch yes to get a pumpkin because it's fall season do you recommend having shaved balls i mean i i think it's more convenient i having put... what shaved balls i don't oh you mean a sack o lantern <laughs> okay <laughs> let's get out of this go to manscaped.com and get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code dangle that's 20 percent off and free shipping at manscaped.com use that code dangle manscaped clear out the leaves it's your tree trunks time to shine wow sackle land there was something i wanted to get to last show but i didn't get the chance so we're gonna get to that in a second is it we dominic were... ducharme it's not dumb okay. did you read it no nope. um it's the fact that daniel alfredson is at sense camp playing as a tryout <laughs> you know he, he wasn't talking to the organization you know that right they broke yes. up he's playing yes. goalie ian mendez daniel alfredson at the rink this morning he'll be behind the bench for team alfredson at practice later today how great is that it's that's love their that. love that they needed to mend that fence yeah yes they needed to mend that mm -hmm. fence i'm glad they did for I'm, the organization i am i am very interested and i don't know if anyone's gonna get this story i'm very interested as to why all of the sudden, the money's being spent. I think, I don't, like, <laughs> I you, think you could say that this is a part of the plan the whole time. I would really like to know the real answer. And I think there's more to it, but I'm happy for Sens fans because I think the, the ownership situation is such that, just on my theory, that the more they spend, the better it is for them right now. And so that'll benefit Ottawa, and I'm happy for that. It also, like... They, yes, they've had a good off season, but the biggest parts of the team are still the ones that were there last year. And mm -hmm. I feel like it's the Sens picking their spot. Like it, I think it's more, I think it's more complicated than, you know, oh, they're spending money now, you know, which is what everyone's saying. And it's what I assumed. I mean, they are spending money, but there was a base there. There was Thomas Shabbat. There was Josh Norris, et cetera, mm -hmm. right? Oh, Brady Kachuk, Jesus, mm -hmm. who was a shining beacon at the NHL play player media tour. They got a goalie. They, they got pillars at basically every position. They got some veteran leadership now. They got Alex DeBrincat, who's an elite talent. Like, that's a, that's a huge get mm -hmm. for them. It's them making a move. And people are... People were a little upset with this last episode for saying, well, they'll be fighting for a playoff spot or whatever. But if you look at it, if they improve, they will be. If they improve 30 points, which is a lot, which is a lot, they will still be, based on last year's point totals, fifth in the division. Yeah. Wow. And they would be, they would make a wild card spot if they had got the same amount of points, they would have edged out Washington last year. And they would have been a point behind, or they would be tied with like Pittsburgh at 30 but points plus. In the Atlantic, I don't know who right now is supplanting uh, them for the Panthers or the Leafs or the Lightning or the Bruins? Like, are we automatically putting the Senators above any I don't, of those I don't four think, teams? I, don't th I think their goaltending is good. I think their scoring's for sure better. It's going to be a knife fight. But I don't think... All I don't think that defense... Like, like that really is what it's going to come down to, right? How's, those, how's their top four 
perform 25 minutes a night. The Panthers, Lightning, Leafs, and Bruins all probably end up with fewer points. Yeah, than last year. Yeah. Because the Sens take away some. Give those points to the Sens, some of them to the Sens, some of them to the Habs, because they're not going to be as bad. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they're going to be good, but they're not going to be free points, which they were last year. (laughs) And Detroit is going to take some of those points. Oh, and Buffalo is going to take some of those points as well. There's two decent bottom of the division teams, for sure, that can make a little bit of a leap. Yeah, Mm -hmm. there's that. It's murderers, bro. There's no. How many easy games are there in the Eastern Conference? None. Like, no. right now, it seems Philly. like the only, t- yeah, Philly. the only team that seems like they're pulling the shoot is Philly. And even those games are, you're going to win 7-3, and they're going to beat the shit out of you. Yep. John Tortorella himself. John Tortorella is going gonna- to get on the ice and just. <laughs> Do you see that picture of him at training camp yesterday with the Flyers player displayed on the ice after a bag skate? No. no. Like he's under John Tortorella. I'm surprised that he allowed this body language. But he's literally starfish underneath yeah. John Tortorella. It's like that is the torts effect. He is skating the shit out of those guys. Ryan Ellis, by the way, looks like he's going to miss the season two. Uh, Ryan he Ellis. Is confirmed. And Sean, that is confirmed. Sean Couturier, yes, yes. Couturier well. is out. Ellis is out. That's tough. It was your top right D. There's so they've so far center, probably they so far have traded for three games of Ryan Ellis. Was it three or four? Okay, four games. Of I'm Ryan gonna Ellis. go with it. Doesn't matter. Like that's rough. it was four. Yeah, man. He had four points in those four games. And he's so good. No, though. five points actually. Holy wow! <laughs> wow. But um, the Ryan Ellis uh, injury stuff, it was blowing my mind because I was try- I'm trying to find exactly what it is, but it was compounding injuries. It was He's it's, so good. It's that a sucks. torn muscle uh, that which runs from the lower spine through the hip and like his, his core and his, his hips are just absolutely destroyed because how, how, how can you expect to operate at a NHL level with a torn muscle in your, in your you spine, can't. in your hip? And like he's been yeah. trying to recover from this. And unfortunately, it looks like it'll probably be career ending. Like that, I'm not a doctor. Yeah. I'm, I'm just speculating here. But if you're out two years for this and you're going to come back in 2023 after this hip injury i don't know it, it might happens. be life might be telling you hey it's time to call it quits yeah yeah and there's another guy i nailed the pk suban thing i gotta say mm-hmm. like it i don't think it was worth it for him to continue playing hockey and you know ryan ellis has made a bunch of money he never won a cup might want to come back for that but mm-hmm. if it's if it's a question of money he's got it mm-hmm and like nobody's gonna sit here and be like, "Oh, Ryan Ellis's career, it sucked." No, he had a very good career. Yeah, there's a wimp who never tried. Like, no, oh, no, 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 no. Oh my no. god, no. Warrior. There's there's like one of the more underrated defensemen like of an era. Mm-hmm. Yeah, basically always proving people wrong. Always, he, he was the guy who kept the puck in on the uh, Eberle goal against Russia. Um. Mm-hmm. That, the cup run with Nashville was unreal. Fantastic. Like, what did he have? I'm just, uh, Jesse's got his hockey DB. Five goals, eight assists, 13 points in 22 games from your back end. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. And he was like nearly a point a game in his last two playoff runs with Nashville. That's so ridiculous. Yeah. What a good player, man. Yep. Double digit goals a couple times. That sucks. Yeah. It's, it's so unfortunate, but. And he would have had, I'm sorry, I'm just looking at his career and the amount of times he would have had way more than double digit goals had it not been for injury is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. There's, okay, 44 game season, he had nine. 49 game season, he had eight. 35 game season, he had five. That's ridiculous, man. Mm -hmm. 58 game season, he had nine. What a good player. And I saw a lot of Flyers fans being like, how did they, how did he pass the physical and get traded? Like, how did we do this? The injury didn't come up until training camp of last year. Yeah. So they didn't know. He passed the physical. He was good up until training camp, and then it started to bubble, and then it happened. It is somewhat unfair that I keep saying, well, Philly traded for this injury-prone player. They should have known. But, uh, I mean, shit also does happen. Mm -hmm. I think it could be a combination of you got an injury-prone player who's who and shit happens. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. Oh, that sucks. And also the it it is relevant that there isn't as much incentive for Philly to get players back. 
right now. And that can be a good situation. Okay, we need you to uh, recover. You take as much time as you need. We've seen teams that are desperate to win and they're poised to win now. They'll move heaven and earth to get a player back. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I feel think- bad for both those guys, man. Oh, yeah. San Couturier. And uh, with the, the trading farm thing, I think your point about, hey, you're going to acquire an injury-prone player is still true in that we cannot know the exact injury is there after we acquire it. Yep. You, you know, don't like know both sides. There. Right. Yeah, like, I don't. I, I, to, to say that uh, to say that they w- willfully like wow, no, 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 uh, no medicals, no medicals. Yeah, right. but, yeah. Like, nobody's that did not happen. No. But as a GM, you can also know you're you're taking on some risk, and yeah. it, it's funny that the, the player who went uh, no Nolan Patrick was there for a while, but it wasn't in this deal, you, obviously. Yeah. But they trade away Nolan Patrick. It was a three way deal. Who he was he was in this deal? Nolan Patrick is out for the year with injuries. Yeah. So it's it's funny they got rid of somebody who's having a season long injury to acquire somebody who's now having a season long injury. Sometimes I forget those, it was a three way deal. Yeah, it was the same deal. Wow. Sometimes those change of scenery deals work out really well, and sometimes th- this is a case of, I mean, basically no one got out of it. <laughs> Horrific for everybody. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Sucks. It's it's the dark side of the of the sport, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not, yeah. That's a Nolan Patrick. Uh, Nolan Patrick. Um, was such a slam dunk gimme. Oh, such a slam hurts. dunk gimme. I want to say, you know what I remember? Jeff Merrick coming on our show at your old apartment. Oh, yeah. At what? Parliament. Yeah. Talking about a 16-year-old with the Brandon Wheat Kings named Nolan Patrick. And this guy's easy killing penalties as a 16-year-old. He's going to be a monster. And it's just... I don't know. We only got one body, man. Yeah. 102 points for Brandon in the 15-16 season. Damn. That's <sighs> absolutely And also was a junior player who played defense. Like, none, oh, of, them, yeah. none of them played defense. But look at his last year. Oh, there. 46 points in 33 games. So two things stand out there. 46 points and 33 games. Mm-hmm. It's, oh my God, in that playoff run, 21 games, 30 points. Frig off. Yeah, that's a slam dunk, man. Mm-hmm. People are like, oh, bust. second overall. Like, no, he's they. The Flyers didn't make a bad decision with Nolan Patrick. It's it happened, man. It mm-hmm. happened. Mm-hmm. Um, Could have had Kale McCarr. Could have. <laughs> you know Stop what? Stop saying it. Stop <laughs> I will saying say, it. That hurts too much. People weren't talking about him like that. No, no, they weren't. No, they, weren't. They, weren't. they were, they were not. not. That's a joke. Yeah, and also like <laughs> it just wasn't like that. It yeah. just wasn't. Cuz re- remember Lilligren? Oh yeah, he was supposed to go top 5. And someone I was talking to yesterday was like ahead of Miro Haskinen and Kale McCarr? Uh yeah. It, depending on who you ask. That's what it was going to be. Yeah, that's what and they he were dropped. thinking. He yep. dropped. I remember saying actually before that draft I'm like I want the Leafs to get Lilligren and you're like, "Well, you you can dream." And then he fell. <laughs> and then he fell. <laughs> um so I didn't expect to spend that much time on this, but I think it's actually, I'm glad that we did. I do want to talk and I want to spend some serious time on, uh, and this is an older story, but I think it's an important one to bring up is, is the Winnipeg Jets leadership situation. Oh yeah. We never really Mm -hmm. talked before camp, uh, and completely by surprise, according to Blake Wheeler, uh, Winnipeg's new head coach, uh, pulled the seat. Rick bonus. Oh yeah. Rick bonus. Sorry. Uh, basically said uh, we're going to have leadership by committee we need more people stepping up and it's not just that like like when joe thornton was stripped in san jose it was very kind it was sort of like listen we talked we sat down we talked to joe we thought it was time for a change of leadership he's still going to be an assistant captain but from what i'm seeing it doesn't look like bleak wheeler's even going to be an assistant captain really and he acknowledged over the course of the summer that they did try to trade him and nobody, they couldn't work it out. And that means, as we've learned with Alan Walsh, that his agent was out there calling people going, Mm -hmm. you interested in Blake, you interested in Blake, because God forbid the GMs pick up the phone. And, you know, you had Mark Shifley's comments at the end of last year, which were pretty like, I need to know where this team is going. And now he's back going, you know, Mark Shifley, of course, that's his guy, right? But Mike Stevens from the Hockey News points out a few few things. And I want to bring this up because this article is very interesting. Now, um, Mike is never halfway on an opinion. So the no. article, the article is the Winnipeg Jets are broken. Mm. And, I, and I wonder what it's about. And, <laughs> but what he does, he makes a really compelling point. And I'm just going to gloss this because I feel like you should read it. Um, he starts with talking about what's happened since Wheeler took over as Jets captain from Andrew Latt. 
And um, since that time, Evander Kane arrived late to the team meeting, violated the dress code. And Mike says, and you know, we made fun of it at the time, but he might have been onto something. Instead of the dress code thing being dealt with by team leaders and being like, hey, you can't do that. Um, Dustin Bufflin took his track suit and threw it in the shower, right? We had, that's a very back on track suit. That's a, yeah. for SDP listeners who have been with us forever, you know. Uh, Kane was then shuffled off to Buffalo. Then there's Jake Truba, who spent most, I'm quoting now, who spent most of his RFA years in Winnipeg demanding a trade or holding out in the 16-17 season uh, just to make a point before ultimately being dealt to the Rangers. Then last season, Truba's former can- uh, roommate, Andrew Kopp, reportedly shared the similar desire to play elsewhere. Then, uh, former Jets forward Paul Stastny told reporters at his end of your media ability, uh, availability in April this year that the team had a lot to learn uh, suggesting players need to quote have more respect for each other, uh, and and Oof. and basically he said this is how the Jets have dealt with their issues under their current leadership's reign. Problems don't get fixed; they get removed. And then he said, and then after Patrick Liney's production stalled uh, in his third and fourth seasons, there was a quote divide between himself and the Jets old guard of Wheeler and Shifley, and that became leaking into the into the public. And then they traded Liney, and he's had a point. You know, he had a point a game year last year. And Wheeler, the quote was, maybe I should have communicated a little better instead of just getting frustrated. And I seem to remember a quote a couple of years ago where he also said, you know, I've got to, I got to really, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he said something about sometimes I'm just spitting bullets. Oh, and so I thought that that said pissed. a lot. And, and Mike said this, how many more signs do you need? Paul Maurice even said, it's time for me to go. New voice in the room. And, and, and I think what we've been told is that this dressing room has been fractious for a while. Mm-hmm. And well, it's these, been a rumor for as long as we've had the show. Uh, yeah. yeah. So these guys, especially Wheeler and Shifley, have had the opportunity to, to go, this guy's a problem, get him out of here. Okay. This guy's a problem, get him out of here. This guy I can't get through with him. I'm frustrated. Get him out of here. Wheeler, and then, Shifley, and, and uh, American Fridge, who I want to bring up after you're, you're done making your point, mm-hmm. they brought up Dustin Bufflin. It was he, as a part of that guard? Because he was absolutely a part of that guard. Well, he, uh, clearly. There's another guy who their body just said, actually, it's time to go, Dustin. Right. He was part of that. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, with all that in mind, and it's, an, it's unfair to put that just at Blake Wheeler's feet. I think you got Chevy, you got Paul Maurice, you got Mark Shifley. Mm-hmm. And the fact that Wheeler and Shifley just flat out refused to play any defense ever. They're, they're so... They're, they're so, shocking. It, it, it's it's embarrassing. They're like I'm usually I'm not usually watching for that. Mm-hmm. Like I'm usually I'm I watch. You know how you watch uh, you your, watch hockey for goals, baby. Yeah, no, but like you watch your team and yes. you notice a little bit less of what the other team does. Sure. Um, it's sometimes there was a the, an OT winner the Leafs scored where like Wheeler might as well have not been on the ice. It was bad. Yeah. It was bad. They can't be arsed going back the other way. It's and it's horrendous leadership. Oh, the, uh, agreed. And and when, so when Blake Wheeler said, you know, it doesn't doesn't matter to me. Like I know I'll still be a leader in the room, and I don't need to be the coach or the captain of an NHL franchise. Bullshit. Of course, it means something. It's an honor yeah. to have. Yeah. I think, um, I think that it is definitely time to move on. And I think Winnipeg made a huge mistake not doing everything they could to move Blake Wheeler this off season and Shifley too. Maybe they be- did. Be- but okay. You can't tell me if Brent Burns' contract can move and Max Pacioretty can move for nothing. No one has Carolina in their no trade list. People got yeah all the Canadian teams. I'm not yep. going to no, single no, no, out Winnipeg. They all got the Canadian teams. I'd be curious. You know how some guys have like a three team list. Mm-hmm. I'd love to know who the three teams are. <laughs> yeah, that's good. an interesting one. I just but unfortunate the unfortunate reality is Winnipeg has a difficult time recruiting players not just in free agency but also making a trade work and this is hard enough to make work because he makes over eight million dollars now all of a sudden you got to find players who make the trade work skill wise and mathematically who are also eligible to be traded to Winnipeg Mm -hmm. and I think it's a extremely short maybe even non-existent list so you're basically it's you're doing the Vegas you're giving them away I don't know what else they could or do. Or draft picks. Yeah. I don't draft know picks, prospects, that sort of thing. And I'm sure that's what Winnipeg would like to do. They need to. It's mm-hmm. time. Um, and, you know, I, I, what I can't help but think is that as much as he is responsible for himself 
and responsible for his leadership. I do feel like Chevy and Paul Maurice need to, and, and maybe Mark Chipman as well, need to take some responsibility. If you have a guy in there who is constantly going, everybody else is the problem. I can't get through to these people. At a certain point, sign them up for a LinkedIn leadership course. They're for free. <laughs> Or remove the captaincy. LinkedIn. I don't remember you know what last I mean? time I logged into LinkedIn. Do something where you can teach this person to either communicate or you're not right for the job before you get to this position. They they were in this position. If you're saying, oh, well, Adam, that's not really fair. Like, yeah, okay, given last year, okay, that was bad. But it was also bad before this, guys. It was bad coming off the Western Conference final. I think it was it was bad and it was propped up by talent. Absolutely. And they had loads of it. They had loads. And but then all of a sudden, they would didn't. stop everything. But then all of a sudden, yeah. Truba wants out, Bufflin retires, and Myers signs somewhere else. And you also made out like bandits. Like you did so much better than you should. You, you, you did so much better in the Truba trade than you had any business doing. I, I they think did they, really well in there. I want to say they got a first round pick and they got Neil Pionk, who was awful. Yeah. Awful. And they made him into a really good player. Mm-hmm. Um, Don't like what he did the least, but okay. Yeah, I agree. Um, and yeah, it's just not good. The only, the only time and I rarely do this, I was a podcast listener yelling through the windshield at American Fridge, and they were talking about how that leadership group has been there for so long and it's worked for so long. And the one thing I wanted to say, and they would obviously know way better than me, but as it looks from the outside, I think that leadership core of Wheeler, Shifley, and for a while, Bufflin worked for them. Yes. I think it worked for them. And yes, there was a, a hierarchy, but it didn't have a lot of steps. Well, and it's sort of like <laughs> what, what it seemed like, and this is where things, and I've worked on teams where this has become an issue, where, you're, where your, your stars become an island. It was and like, it's like, like you're, not, you're not welcome here. We're the stars. We'll tell you what to do, and we'll call you when we need you. But don't bug me otherwise. And that's how it's, it's feel. They're talking about, those guys were always talking about the gym and training and this and that, and I get that's great. That's great. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I think, I think the most embarrassing thing that happened to the Winnipeg Jets last year was not Shifley and Wheeler's defense. It wasn't their head coach going, I don't want to coach here anymore. It was when they beat the Leafs and, and Shifley holding that puck up and going, is there anything better than beating the Leafs? It, no, no. That was the peak of their season. That's embarrassing. That is, is that all you got? Is there anything better than beating the Leafs? How about making the playoffs? Yeah. Yeah. With no. your Vesna caliber goaltender. I think we're being a little Leaf fan salty about that, but I also <laughs> oh, I think kind of agree. I also kind of <laughs> Come agree. On. You guys touched on it there, but I think all, all this time, all of this has been going on, but as we say in pro sports, winning solves everything. And the Winnipeg Jets were a very good team and they're winning. So none of these things were issues. And as soon as the Jets started losing, all of these cracks started to show. And they've always been there. Like, mm-hmm. these personalities didn't just develop in the last two years. Mm-hmm. They were doing this while they were going to that Western Conference run. And now that they suck, we're seeing what they truly are. And it's not a very uh, good team that's not built on chemistry. You know, like, they don't get along, clearly. And the locker room is toxic, and it needs to change. A team with as much talent as the current Winnipeg Jets should be able to survive the Central Division. I'm, I'm, they're, they're a fascinating wild card team. Yeah. They, cause, cause yeah. Like Connor Ellibuck could just have a great season. And they'll be fine. A 9 22 season, and the Jets are in the playoffs. If they had three 40 goal scorers, would it be a shock at all? I don't think who so. You, who are you putting in three? Uh, Shifley, Wheeler. Shifley, well, okay, let's, yeah, guys who are eligible. Kyle Connor is the free space. Oh, Shifley, Wheeler, and Ehlers. Ehlers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I'm not four, saying yeah. all four guys are three start. of the four, maybe you could get you could get as many as three, and I think it's reasonable, and Connor could reasonable to hope 50. for two. Yeah, and yeah, Connor could put up fifty. Hellebuck is at least going to be above league average. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like they can they can make the playoffs, man. But their locker room is just cancer. Yeah, it's it's bad. Seemingly fractious is what they keep. You know, we we keep talking about. I'm excited to see what Cole Perfetti looks like. Um, Who's another one? Uh, uh, They're going to score goals. Yeah, Sam Gagne on the fourth line. Mason Appleton's a great player. Like, there's good players like here, him. guys. It's just, yeah. and they they could be very good this year. They get it's, production from the back end. Yep. I just, I just, high, it's, high it, it seems like it's time. Seems like it's time. And by the way, if they did do a quick, because I don't think they need to rebuild. I think they need to retool. Those guys go move on. Well, the Jets can go either 
pull value back out of those guys or they have cap space, which, by the way, no other team has. That's the thing, right? If, if, if those guys are not, if Shifley and Wheeler are all of a sudden not there, and let's say they have to give that away, giving that away isn't just like giving it away and you get nothing. You actually get cap space, yeah. which is the most valuable thing in the league. And you could say, you could tell me all day, oh, well, nobody wants to get traded there. Nobody wants to sign there. I think if the money's right, you'll sign anywhere. Well, do you have cap friendly open? I don't. But okay, I no, 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 don't pull it up. How old is Blake Wheeler? 35, 36. He's one of the older players in the league. He's 36 years yeah, old. Yeah. We're getting to the end of the run of Blake Wheeler. No one, I don't think anybody wants to take on a 36-year-old when he's going to retire in two years. Hopefully, if you're the Jets, that's how you get rid of He'd it. He'd be good. You just deadline. describe Brent Burns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, man, he's still scoring a ton. If you have fun. If you have good team defense and you can't score, Blake Wheeler's your guy. Because he's tough and he scores. And if you've got defense around him, that's fair. It's perfect. I don't know. Blake Wheeler seems like he doesn't have a lot of time left in National Hockey. And they can it always, should work. Unless he's got it a bonus structure work. that's really weird, they can they oh. can always retain for a year. The Jets do have a bonus structure. A Rick bonus structure. <laughs> so, in, in a way, Rick bonus is like the most important part of this team this year. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're talking about a team that has the talent that should win that doesn't. For uh, yeah. he does. for the record, his salary is paid out as a salary. There's no, it's not paid out in signing bonus. And he has a oh. five team no trade. No, player submits a five team trade list. So Blake Wheeler can only be traded to five teams. Yeah, dude. Like a, <laughs> trading him is borderline impossible. I, gets, I would I would say to Blake, listen. He gets to pick five teams. You, you, it's like what Lou, Lou does. It's like, listen, we don't want you here. Yeah. So how about we go ahead and waive that? You want to go to a playoff team? Like that's what that's what you, you have the you have the conversation. Does the playoff team want eight million dollars? Well, what, what, weird... what about four million? I'd take them at four million. Oof. What a weird structure. You gotta have good leadership and you gotta have good strong team defense. Blake Wheeler is an extremely valuable hockey player. And he's big and he's not fun to be forechecked uh, on against whatever. Yeah. This is his contract by year. 10, 6.5, 10, 6.5, 8.25. Why is it structured that way? That's the know. salary he makes each season. Yeah, so this year is the second 6.5, followed by next year, 8.25. So that and makes it's it all hard. salary. Dude, they I, can I don't know how you do it. You retain. I, I, I guess. I That's think, a lot of money. I think man. we've seen that everybody can be traded, but it's just yeah. very, very difficult. It's a lot of money. Uh, yeah. a lot it's going to take a while for Blake. To wrap that conversation up, uh, 30 years ago, this has nothing to do with Blake Wheeler. Let's wrap that conversation up. I just wanted a quickly, quick history factoid. 30, 30 years ago today, Manon Rion became the first uh, first woman to play in an NHL exhibition game. I did not I know that. It was 30 years ago. 30 it years ago. September 23. <laughs> Uh, uh, 1991. The pivot I believe, or 1992 the pivot made complete. Listen, sense. I'm I'm not I'm <laughs> I'm in training camp. Okay, I'm in training camp. I wanted to ask you guys about Adam's this. Adam's in the best shape of his life. Um, aren't we all? What did you guys think? Brad Marchand made a comment about young captains in the NHL. Oh yeah, yeah. he said. And and of course we've got Suzuki's a young captain. Who else is a young captain in the NHL? I can't. I couldn't really think uh, of any. Landis Gog was the youngest ever. Was he not? I thought Eiserman was. Eiserman, Eiserman was like 19 or yeah. 20. And Taves was pretty young. It Taves, who but was on the Blackhawks, who beat Brad Marchand and the Bruins in the Stanley Cup final in 2013. Um, so, Landis Gog was named the fourth captain in Colorado Avalanche hi history at the time, becoming the youngest captain in NHL history. Wow, okay. Boom. Hockey trivia. Girl. Stump right. Steve. Well, let me ask you guys something. You, you guys <laughs> both have dogs. You ever seen your dogs roll in something? Yeah. yeah, they like rolling in shit. Rolling in shit and rolling in mud and rolling in all dead you, birds. You've seen that? Mm -hmm. There's a bird carcass. My dog's like that's that's life. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, yeah. I'm gonna roll in that and I'm gonna bring it over to you and show it <laughs> yeah. off. And have you ever looked at your dog and gone, "Why the fuck did you do that? Mm -hmm. Why did you do that?" And if they could talk, you know what the dog would say? Because I love it. That's Brad Marchand. Okay, let me read the quote, but because I, I, I think you're on to something. He said, it's almost unfair to be giving these young kids the captaincy at 20, 21, 22, because they don't have any idea what it's like to be a captain in the NHL. You're setting a kid up for failure by doing that. And that is a direct shot at what happened in Montreal. It's a, a direct shot. It's a direct shot at Nick Suzuki, and it is a... Nico Heischer? Master oh, class. Guess, yeah. ah, Brad Marchand's not talking about Nico Heischer. Yeah. He, doesn't <laughs> yeah, he doesn't care about Brad. He doesn't care Brady? about shit. Brady Kachuk? <laughs> he might be talking about Brady Kachuk because Brady? Brady Kachuk is in his division. Mm -hmm. 
But it does I, th- feel I think like that's Nick. the bonus. That's the garnish. Yeah. The meat is he's talking about Nick Suzuki because he is Brad Marchand mm-hmm. of the Boston Bruins and he is the Boston Bruiniest. And he is talking about the captain of the Montreal Canadiens. And you know why? Because fuck him. Because I'm Brad Marchand of the Boston Bruins. Do you wear red, white, and blue? Eat shit. <laughs> yeah. That's. Yeah. Yeah. Brad, why did you do that? In the same way that Iggy rolls in rabbit shit. Yeah. Face first. So much for so much rabbit shit. And I go, <laughs> Iggy, why did you do that? And his answer is because I love it. Right. Why did Brad Marchand do that? Face covered in poo. Oh my because God. I love that. It. Because the mind games have already started. It's okay. already started. I love that. And Nick Suzuki, you know, first game. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll, we'll see how that he does his best poly walnuts. <laughs> I don't know if Nick Suzuki is capable of that. Mm-hmm. He is. I just thought that he's always good for a quote, yeah. Brad Marchand. So I'm, I'm looking for, I'm looking forward to two matchups. Now I'm looking forward to Montreal, Boston. I will go out of my always. way to watch that. Always. Because you know, you know, guys like Josh Anderson are not going to be happy about that. Mm-hmm. And I am really looking forward to, now that you've brought it up, Senators Bruins this year, because you've got Brad Marchand and, versus new Brad Marchand. And and finally, the Ooh. Senators are going to be competitive. New, much larger Brad Marchand. He's much bigger, much bigger. <laughs> so, and uh, can I make this about the Leafs? Do you mind? Please. Um, it's often said that they're not tough enough for, for well, in general, and also the playoffs. Uh, I tell you what, the Atlantic Division's a hell of a training ground. Tampa's not afraid of shit. Florida's going to be a miserable experience. Mm -hmm. The Bruins are always a miserable experience. The Habs are going to be a miserable experience. The Sabres aren't afraid of shit. The Red Wings are going to be a miserable experience because apparently those teams hate each other for some reason, and the Sens are going to be a miserable experience. There's nowhere to hide in the Atlantic Division in terms of skill and in terms of getting your ass kicked. So, if any division is ever going to bring the best out of you, and Detroit's it's this like, we're one. here, we're here too. I said them. I said <laughs> I them. Know. Damn it! No, yeah. If any team is going to bring a championship out of you, it's the Atlantic. Man, this will be fun. This is going to be a fun yes. year. Yep. Um, uh, David Perron in a Red Wings jersey, by the way, is so weird. That's yeah. weird. Andrew Kopp is weird. Andrew Kopp's weird. There's a lot of weird ones. The Red Wings, I think, are going to lead the hockey community in, oh, yes, per 60. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh, you signed with right. the oh, yeah. I did, oh. And they have, don't they have uh, uh, Jesse's, Jesse's boy from St. Louis? Yeah, they oh, got yeah. Billy Huso. Yeah, oh, Billy Huso. Yeah. That yeah. great deal. Oh, yeah. On a great deal. He says. They're going to they're gonna have a fantastic season in net. They're 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 gonna <laughs> absolutely they're Zero gonna lead. time Stanley Cup champion Jesse Blake lead the hey. league. Hey. Hey. Oh yeah! <laughs> Watch out! This Don't year, worry, Zona's gonna be big. The, the Coyotes year. are bringing the crap people a cup. I'm telling you. Zoned in. That's that's that's, that's gonna not be your thing. Is Zone, that a Z- zoned, zoned in? in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Our, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Let's do the press conference, boys. Who doesn't love cereal? Um, think of the worst person you know. Them. Yeah, agreed. But the thing is, when you're adult, cereals, like adult cereals taste bland. I remember my dad just have it. You just have some wheat. Literally just be like, there's some wheat and he'd put some milk on it. I believe Steve called them hey Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Forgot about that. Literally. But Magic Spoon has truly innovated and changed the game with sugary cereals, uh, except that they're not sugary. They're really good for you. 13 to 14 grams of protein and only 4 to 5 net grams of carbs per serving. It's low-carb, keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and only 140 calories per serving. Cocoa, fruity frosted, uh, peanut butter, blueberry muffin, maple waffle. These are just some of the flavors that you can get. And if you go to magicspoon.com slash STP to grab a custom bundle of cereal, try it for yourself. Use the promo code STP at checkout to save five bucks off your first order. And Magic Spoon, so confident in their order, they got a 100% money back guarantee. That's very confident. If you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions. Wow. None. That's the quite that's the kind of confidence that it should be at like 110%. They should like give you money. <laughs> you know? You know I don't know that they want to do that. Also, I feel like they might ask some questions. Like, okay, where, right. where, where do you live? <laughs> <laughs> Remember, you get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash STP and What's use the name? code STP to save five bucks off. There have been a lot of weddings this year, and that means sometimes you have a couple drinks. If you try Z Biotics, 
and you drink it beforehand, it might just help you out. Zbiotics is a pre-alcohol probiotic, the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut, and it feels toxic, doesn't it? Sure does. Um, that it's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough gut the next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break that byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut, where you need it the most. Just remember, Zbiotics, you drink before alcohol, drink responsibly, get a good night's sleep, and have your best tomorrow. And Zbiotics, we want you to give it a try. Go to zbiotics.com slash STP and get 15% off your first order when you use that promo code SDP at checkout. Zbiotics is backed by a 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. Halloween is right around the corner. So order a pack of Zbiotics for you and your friends today to make sure you get it in time for candy and cocktails. Zbiotics.com slash SDP. Use the code SDP at checkout for 15% off. What a bet. You can do it at Sports Interaction, Canada Sportsbook. Football is back. We're already in week three, guys. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like the Steelers play on Thursday. Again. Again. For the thrice time. The thrice time. Baseball playoffs are coming. Hockey season right around the corner. You can bet pregame, live and play, or in one of the many prop bets like we talked about today. Made for Canadians by Canadians. Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit, play, and cash out. Join now to see all that sports betting has to offer. Just head to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. That's sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. Ontario only, 19 plus. Please play responsibly. The Presser SDP. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. Jesse, can I be your assistant GM? Uh, everybody watching the streams is my AGMs. That is how the stream works. So I can say that you and I work in management in Arizona. If you'd like to say that. So I can say it's me, Jesse, and Ari. Right? It's me, Jesse, what? and Ari. If they test me, they sorry. You, that what? bang bang I, I, song. Oh, you mean Nick, the... Nicki Minaj, Ariana Grande. Yeah. Oh, Jesse J. That. Very popular. It's very popular. That's like oh, a 2015 yeah, MTV uh, VMA reference it, there. It's a very popular song out of that. And it was thin. It was another thin track. Me? No. Thin on good. No song with Jesse J is thin. How dare you? That was an awful, awful reference. That's me, a bad Jesse, era. and Ari. <laughs> it's me, Jesse, and Ari. Wasn't see. it? Wasn't there the Rita Ora song at that point, too, with. Um, who was that with? Black she, or Black Widow wasn't that with Iggy Azalea, Rita Ora, and Iggy Azalea or something? She is. Um, she fits into an interesting category of celebrity who um, I would never recognize if <coughs> held at gunpoint. Rita Ora, yeah, identify the celebrity or you'll die. And I'd just be like, can I? Do I get a phone call? Really, really like, super talented. I think should have probably gone further than she did. But I, is also there's there's a there's a category in entertainment called you're famous and you're British famous. And if you're British oh. famous, you're famous forever. Brits have a huge celebrity star system, and they are very engaged in their stars. And she is, and she's also, um, uh, besides being very talented herself, she, I believe, she is dating Taika Waititi, who's one of the best directors out there right now, and he's ah. he's awesome. So it's quite the power couple. Uh, let's get but that's to a some bad questions. song. That's so a bad song. It's on not, our Discord, I like it. SCPN.ca. There's a link to join us on Discord. There, it's a banger. Um, Bozy. Bozy. writes in our press conference questions channel that they're hoping to hear our take on the fake Jim Matheson interview that happened. Oh, man. Did you guys oh, I cannot see believe this the is drama real. that happened on the internet okay, so, a couple of days ago? So, Jesse, do you have so, this ready? So, yes, I do. Okay, good. So, a I, the Switzerland Times reached out to Jim Matheson for an interview for his take on uh, some Oilers stuff. But the Switzerland Times didn't know that they were reaching out to a fake Jim Matheson <laughs> Twitter account. So is so, that the NHL by Maddie one that we... I don't know what actual account they reached out to, but no one, one of them... No one knows what... I don't know if his real one is authentic. <laughs> There's so to many, this day, I don't know. There are so many different Jim Matheson parody accounts and a couple of real ones, and I don't know which one's actually him, that they reached out to one of them, and this person behind this fake account gave an interview as Jim Matheson. Oh, no. Maybe and, the real Jim Matheson is the friends we made along the way. Oh, no. and, the, and the quote in the screenshot that... Uh, 
that Bozy provides us is is this question. So they they the Switzerland Times asked fake Jim <laughs> Matheson. They said, so here's what two Edmonton reporters say about Koskinen. Miko Koskinen <gasps> played for the Edmonton Oilers for four years. Blick asked two reporters from the Edmonton Journal about their balance of the fit. Jim Matheson said, what remains of Miko's time in Edmonton is an absolute lack of bite. He had everything to be a successful goalie here. I think former assistant goalie coach Bofa D summed it up when he told me <laughs> that Miko could have been an annual contender for the Vesna Trophy for best NHL goalie if he had the same drive as his 40-year-old competitor Mike Smith would have had. I got to know Miko as a wonderful person and I wish him all the best in Switzerland. He will always be remembered for his enthusiasm for Taco Bell's cheesy gordita crunch. <laughs> I can't believe <laughs> that last line will go down in NHL Twitter history. Oh my Bo god, Fadiz. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess so that's that's the context of the interview. Uh, Miko Gossian's gonna be playing over there, so they reached out to Jim Matheson to find out what he thought, and uh, yeah. Miko apparently loves Taco Bell's cheesy gordita crunch, oh according God. to fake Jim Matheson. Like, unbelievable. I know there's a language barrier there, but <laughs> one, you don't go, why the Taco Bell quote? <laughs> I don't understand why that matters. Does Edmonton have a Taco Bell? I don't know. They're kind of sparse these days. And number two, you didn't think to google both of these <laughs> man <laughs> i encourage you I all bad for the report. google both of these <laughs> go ahead by the way you could see how that might be like you go, try oh it. well that sounds nordic <laughs> you know <laughs> both of these you know you could feel i feel like you could you know <laughs> can, can we get a both of these joke <laughs> can you can you set set Adam Wild up oh, for a no, both of these I, jokes? I, you know I'm gonna fumble that. Steve, yeah, Steve, I'm terrible with jokes. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. <laughs> no, I'm gonna do it by the end of the show. Okay, all right, all right. All right. I'll have to sneak up on him. It's. Uh, I feel bad. I feel bad when everybody. I I don't like pranks. Like I don't like like April April Fool sucks. Oh, prank, I hate April prank April. videos are the worst part of the internet. Well, because they're all fake too. Because yeah. they're all fake, yeah. They're all actors, and like I feel bad for the people on the at the Switzerland Times who thought they were getting a good reporter from Edmonton to speak on their new goaltender in Switzerland. But it's fucking funny. <laughs> oh man, oh man, it's lol. Also, I'm so sorry, but also lol. <laughs> Comma, See, sorry. I think it's I think it's I think they reached out to Jim Matheson on NHL, which is a fake account. Uh, and then there's Jim Matheson NHL, and then there's Jim Atheson NHL. <laughs> <laughs> like there's so I'm looking at them, like, like what are these is real? Jim Atheson? Jim Jim Atheson. <laughs> and I because you can, you know, you can <laughs> <laughs> used to you used to be able to tell because he was verified. It was NHL by Maddie, and then one day he was tweeting out porn, and everybody's like, "What's going on?" And he was hacked. But then he never reached out to Twitter to get the verification. And one of the Jim Matheson fake accounts has eight thousand followers. Guys, that's so funny. Like, like it, it looks real. Oh. I can see how this happened. I can oh. totally see how this happened. And they're just looking for a fucking quote. Why would oh you look up companies? <laughs> <laughs> I got the real guys right there. Yeah, both of these known for his work in the DEL. <laughs> he trained under Olaf Kolsik. Oh man, he's part of a German <laughs> so goaltending good. dynasty. Both of these, both of these, <laughs> truly a pioneer. When both of these tried to park in Philadelphia but went to the wrong lot, what happened? <laughs> They asked him, what are you, nuts? Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, uh, um, uh, okay. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Jesse. What else have we got? <laughs> uh, DS Color 14. <laughs> <laughs> they want to know. Jim Atheson? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. You're a fucking asshole. <laughs> Fuck a shit for doing that. <laughs> also, good work, but okay, also, fuck you. Really like, 
Oh. I think there's room for interpretation here. Oh. <laughs> DS color 14. There's nuance to this. Okay, go ahead. DS Steve, color 13. Steve, did you use your boat this summer? No. <laughs> <laughs> but now I got to work on getting it back from uh do you want to do you want to borrow my pickup because i don't think you own a vehicle that could pull that thing no back. and neither does my friend matt who's one of the owners of the cottage <laughs> and his brother moved to the other side of that cottage he moved to Ottawa. right yeah so uh, and brought his pickup truck with him yeah give me your truck you, all right you can uh, take it anytime you want also the cottage is on an island so they need to be there to let us on the boat yeah, you have to paddle it over before the ice freezes yeah and then i don't even remember how we got it there Bootmaster Ben, if you were to compete on The Masked Singer, what would your character and first song be? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Is that CTV Promotions trying to get in yes. weasel their way uh, out of this show? Their account says, not CTV PR. <laughs> uh, if I were ever on The Masked Singer, I would try to get as far away from the studio as possible with the outfit without getting caught. That would be my mission. Oh, I wouldn't perform. Really good. What's I would just your, try to steal the What's outfit. your costume? <sighs> just a big set of lips. <laughs> it would it would just be I would just be like the like the Aerosmith logo, yeah, yeah. but without the tongue, I would just be... That's mm. Rolling Stones, by the way. Yeah, that one. Sorry, my mm -hmm. bad. And, and my, the, dad's, you have, my dad's just like kicking me. Oh, would right you have now. the legs I coming out? Sun. Punching air right Sorry. now. Sorry. <laughs> You're going to spill my drink. Um, would you have the legs coming out? The bottom of the lip yes. costume? Yeah. yeah. That's how I envisioned So <laughs> I would look like the old um, raisin. Yeah. You remember oh, those yeah. raisins? The California was, raisins. The California raisins. Yeah. It was just a raisin with white legs and white arms and Mario gloves. Yeah. That would be me, but a big, just a juicy pair of lips. <laughs> okay. That's with funny. the glittery what gloss What song would you on. sing? What song would you sing? None, because I would be performing no. my escape. No. no. What no. song would you sing? Um, I would sing, um, oh man, what, what do I just shred? Skin a rinky dink. I sing it every day to Leo. I would just crush skin a rinky dink. That would work with the mass singer. It would work with the mass singer. You have to have like a dance too. Yeah. Right? Like no, the producers whole... would like that. I uh, think they, they could work with that. Really like and that. you know how everyone on American television has to be, or sorry, every Canadian on American television has to be the most Canadian? Yeah. You got to pour maple syrup in your eyeballs. Yeah. And I'd have to say something cringe like, shout out Sharon, Lois, and Bram. You know? <laughs> That's what I'm from I would Manitoba. Say. Yeah, <laughs> Sharon Lois and Bram. Um, what do you know about Sharon Lois? Adam, and what's Bram? your costume in your song? Shit, I don't know. Um, it it has to be like a big. Uh, uh, well, because I have a huge head, my uh, mm. uh, my nickname behind my back. I didn't know this was my nickname until I accidentally discovered it in high school. Was Alien Head. So I never uh, knew that. Well, like early high school, or like late, oh. you know, junior high when people are super shitty. Yes. Yeah. So that's what apparently used to people used to call me. So I'd be a gigantic gray man, like you know the big aliens with the big oh. eye on, mm. right? I think. I think. Yeah. So that, a little bit of history and a little bit of a hint there, and then mm -hmm. song. I don't know. Like it would be kind of fun to do something that I would be objectively terrible at. So probably rap. No, um, you should do like Taylor Swift. You think so? Yeah. I, think I was thinking like Ludacris or Pitbull. Bang Bang by Jesse J, <laughs> Ariana Grande. You should and do like Minaj. Done. 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 No, Done. you Let's should do, do like love, All three love Story. Love Story? Or, or maybe if you want to do rap, do like Starships. I could do E.T. by Katy Perry because I'd oh, be an alien. Be awful. What would you do if your son was at home? <laughs> City <laughs> High? <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you should do that one. What in would you do voice. when your son was at home? You that know, is like the, the most unnecessary, ill-timed rap oh. breakdown in any song ever. Crazy. By the way, it's crazy. Like you're trying to make that cool. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Yeah, crazy story. That group got together, had that hit. They were offered major record labels or major record deals, and they all they said no because they all wanted their solo careers, and that well, was they. Felt like they should have said yes. And their names, respectively, were Sharon, Lois, Listen, and Brian. And Steve, I want to ask you this one last question before we go. It's from Good One Randy. The, you're the perfect person to answer this. Austin Matthews' is second ever NHL goal. It might still be the best of his career. That's the question. Is that the best of his career, or has he topped it since? That's funny. I was thinking about that the other day. Well, because I tweeted about it. Great question, Good One Randy. It is Steve, what one. do you think? So that's the one where he... He yeah, strips Mike it. Hoffman, loses the puck, strips Eric Carlson, 
Um, and what I never noticed about the goal until I watched it recently is how Zach Hyman and William Nylander, his teammates, are doing nothing. They're doing nothing because they should be on the back check. Yep. Because there's no reason for Matthews to be the alien that he is. The absolute... Yeah, Jesse's got the goal up now. Okay. Martin Marincin is on the ice with his D partner, Connor Carrick. It was a different time. The stealing oh. off of Hoffman, evading the ref somehow. Shout out to Nazem Kadri's dad, who was sitting there with Austin Matthews' parents. God, this is such a time capsule. I love his parents. They're just nice people. Yeah. Um, The pride of Hermosillo. There we go. Right there. So here's the full thing. So that's Mark Stoney strips. Oh. Mike Hoffman, he strips, evades the ref, evades his own teammate, strips Eric Carlson, and just pants his friggin' uh, Craig Anderson, and I don't know who the defenseman was who sprawled out there. All, basically, every sen on the ice got got oh, on that oh, play. That's oh, tourists oh, oh, oh. who he just... Ah! Give me that shit! It's so dirty! Oh. And then who's the defenseman? Carlson. No, 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 no uh, the other guy. The like, one there? Sprawled yeah. on his face. Oh, it looks like Mathot? Mathot. I think it's Mathot. Yo, you should screen grab that and just send it to Mark Mathot every time he tweets about the Leafs. You should not. Mathot, yeah. Yeah. You should just, yeah. just subscribe. They won, that, they won that game. I Still send it to him. Whatever. But holy shit. No, every cent on the ice got got. I, okay, it, so, so what are you putting up against this? If we're doing a bracket and it's the final oh. four, like what do we got In terms that of can top this goal? All timers? Matthews, so his okay. career. He had a goal. I want to say it was also from his rookie season. It might have been a sophomore. I think it was his rookie though. Remember where he's falling down, and he like just sort of scooches it backward mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. on whoever the Carolina goalie was. I want to say Cam Ward. Oh, Jesse has it right there. <laughs> doop, doop. Oh, yeah. Like that's so dumb. I would also put the the uh, the listen goal against Chicago up. See, like, I don't even remember area. how the. I don't remember the goal though. Oh, okay. Yeah, I feel like that celebration was okay, more okay. dramatics for the game scenario. Yeah, you right. know, when he made the entire oh fuck, this goal is nuts. Where so he knocks it down <sighs> to himself at the blue line and beats. Stupid. He passes it to himself, knocks it down out of the air against the Montreal Canadiens, and snipes the shit out of Carey Price. And I remember that game because uh, Price was like unbeatable. <sighs> Jesse just showed the amazing Whoa. drag goal against the Predators. And what I remember about this game is it was his first game after, I want to say, a 20-game absence after the Truba hit. He was out a long time. That's a filthy goal. I'm going to put something into contention here. It's not a goal, but the spinorama to Mitch Marner next-gen game mm. where it's their seventh goal. Was the that game. the one against Carolina? Yeah. 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 That yeah. was disgusting. That's not a goal, but I think it's got to be up there. Where he forced... Rasmus Dahlin to temporarily try to be a goalie <laughs> and just just ruin the entire Sabres roster. That was a good one. So what Jesse has here is a, what is this? So Top 10 career goals, but it's from March 20th, 2001. So they have ranked, this is the NHL's YouTube channel. They have on the top 10 career plays, the second goal of his career ranked number one, the one we're talking about. It's, it's number amazing. one on the list. <laughs> I remember watching it and being like, Oh my God, he's ours. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Oh my God, I can't believe this guy's a Leaf. Is oh, there anything... Uh, the, on, on this list, what Jesse just showed us is the snipe on oh, Columbus. And that all, that's all it is, is a really good shot. But yeah. that's the one that made Ray Ferraro um, make a noise. <laughs> oh! Because <laughs> he was on the side of the... He, he saw it. Mm -hmm. Everyone at home is like, oh, I hit the post or something. So... Let's put let's put a cap oh on this. Oh my god! Are you putting anything above that second goal? Any of the ones we've talked about? All of the ones we've watched here on YouTube that you can't watch because we don't own the rights to this. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're listening, I'm sorry. Maybe it's one not, day. List, scored, audio is not a visual medium. He scored bigger goals, <laughs> like the game five winner against Tampa, for uh -huh. example. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh my god, that's that's fucking disgusting. All of these are disgusting. Oh. This goal that got lost. Right. Right. Yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. Showing it. Stop showing yeah. it. It is no. It's still the best one he ever scored. Okay. Still the it's best cool. one he ever scored. It's a cool thing because now we're always like, is the next goal can it top that? His second ever goal. He's gonna score six hundred of them. Do you want to get do do a good trivia thing? Okay. Do mm -hmm. it next next time. Describe an Austin Matthews goal 
like in words, like what happened, and Steve will tell you like who what team it was oh, against. Maybe. Oh yeah. I think you could do that. It, okay, and you know how I know I just the fire the extra. Fire yeah, the extra. Sorry. <laughs> that way we have to wrap it. This, <laughs> I know I'm getting older, <laughs> but I know I'm not old because name a Gretzky goal. Well, I remember the uh, the eight eight ninety one or whatever that was, where he became the most professional goals all time, or whatever that mm-hmm. was. I remember that one, L A. Like, what's on the Gretzky highlight? And then the goalie, like, where he's like this, and he's yeah. Skipping. You, you start, you start this conversation in the middle of the extra. <laughs> <laughs> the Steve Dangle Podcast, powered by Sports Interaction. Get this sports book. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.